Hi everybody, this is Umair. I am a professional graphic designer and software developer. I am developing different applications for Android, for desktop applications and different web applications for about three to four years. And today I'm going to show you how to develop a simple snake game as you can see on my screen. In this game, uh, I will show you how to move the snake, how to draw graphics, how to design the user interface for your game. If you already done some programming, uh, if you already know how to write simple code uh, like uh, writing loops, writing different conditional statements, writing different methods and want to learn something more interesting and want to develop something more cool, uh, then I would recommend you to follow these tutorials and start developing this simple game with me. Uh, before proceeding further, uh, I just want to show you that in this game you can see I have the header that contains a snake written on it and on the top right corner I'm showing the scores and the length of the snake which is 3 currently. So I'm just gonna play it and uh, to move the snake I have implemented the arrow keys of my keyboard so I'll just press the right arrow key uh, so you can see that my snake is moving on all four directions uh, and let's pick up this enemy and you can see that I'm picking these enemies and the scores and length on the top uh, right corner are also being incremented and one of the most interesting thing that I'm going to show you how to implement is that uh, when it will go towards the right side it will come out from the left side and when it will go towards the left side it will come out from the right side and in same is uh, from the up and down side you can see that it has gone down side and come out from the up side and this is all about maths and calculation that I'm going to show you in this series if you if you just want to learn this then uh, please make sure you subscribe this channel and like our Facebook channel to get up to date so before uh, end this part I just want to make you sure that uh, you have installed JDK on your system or uh, you must uh, have uh, um, NetBeans or Eclipse or simple notepad uh, for writing simple Java program uh, so before that, uh, uh, another thing that I just want to make sure show that there are different graphics art like the face of the snake, the circles you are looking at are the, uh, the small pictures of 25 by 25. Uh, I have given the link in the description below. You must download these graphics and save it somewhere in your system, uh, which we will use those graphics in developing this game. Uh, so um, I wish you all the best and uh, I can make you sure that you are going to learn a lot. So see you in the next part. Hi everybody, this is Umair. I'm back with the second part of this tutorial series of developing snake game in Java. In the previous part, we just introduced our game that what we are going to do in this part we will implement the user interface for our game and for that you can see that uh, on my screen that I have opened Eclipse on my system and, and in here I'll just go to the file new and make a new Java project I'll name this project 2D Snake okay I'll click on next and then finish you can see that uh, the project has been created in my package explorer I'll just expand it and you can see there are two main folders uh, and a library file. Uh, I'll right click on source and make a new Java class. I'll name this class main and check this main method because this is the method the compiler comes first. Uh, so I'll click on finish. You can see that my class has been created uh, right here and right uh, here in the default package. Uh, so First, uh, what we are going to do is I am going to make uh, a JFrame. JFrame is the window uh, in which our game runs. Uh, so for that, uh, I'll just go and write JFrame and make a new object for it. 
you can see that it's showing an error so I'll just uh, import the package for that import java x dot swing dot j frame and now I'll set the properties for this frame like what should be the background color what should be the title what should be the size of this frame and so for that I'll first set the set bounds okay I'll go with 10 then it has a width of 905 and height of 700 now I'll set the background background should be dark gray set resizable I'll just set it to false so that the user may not resize the window of my game and now I will set visibility equals to true and lastly I will set the default close operation to exit on close so these are all the properties that we need in this game so it will make a new object of this frame set the size set the background set if it is uh, resizable or not set its visibility so now let's see if we can see our frame or not okay you can see that uh, it a new window has been opened uh, and this is the frame and now what we need to do we need to implement our panel uh, and add that panel inside this frame uh, so for that we are gonna make a new class inside the same package so I will right click here and name it as gameplay and click on finish all right so now I need to extend a class J panel and then add the object of this class inside this object all right so I'll go here and extend J panel all right it has uh, a, some methods that uh, we need to implement in this class so I'll just go here and import the package for it and now you can you can see that I have extended the J panel in this class and now I'm go, going back and make a new object for that class gameplay all right and now I will Add the object of gameplay to the object of JFrame. And this is all we need to do in this main class. Now everything we will do later on will be in this gameplay class. So for that I will just go and make a new constructor for this class. For now let's leave it empty. Okay, so public void paint graphics G. Okay, and now I'll import the package for the graphics class. Now you can see that this is the method, this is the built in method that, uh, that draws each and everything on the, on the panel. So and now we will need to use this object, the object of this graphics class to draw everything. You can see that we have a header at the top of our panel uh, and we need to add an image for that and other than this we need to add the playing area under that header. Uh, so before proceeding further I just want to show you that if you have seen the previous part of my game. Uh, then I have given the link in the description just click on that link and download the assets that we need for this game uh, so now uh, what we need to do is we need to bring those assets inside this project so I will just go to my desktop and develop snake game assets and I will select all these assets and drag these to my project.
so you can see that I have brought all the assets in my game in my project uh, and now we can use these images for this part we just need to uh, add the snake title so, so for that I will go and make a new object for image icon class so title image all right we need to implement it for that we need to bring the package for that and now inside this paint method uh, we are going to draw this title uh, before that uh, I'm just gonna show you that uh, we have we need to implement four things first we need to implement the border of that title image and then we need to draw the title image inside that border after that we need to draw the border of the playing area of the snake and then we need to implement the background color for that playing area for the snake uh, so for that uh, I'll just go and first draw the border so draw title image border and now first we will set the color I'll go and set the white color then I will draw the rectangle rectangle it has x value to 24 y to 10 width is 8 by 1 and height is 55 all right now I will draw the title image okay so for that I will you, you can see that I have uh, declared the object for this image icon so title image equals to new image icon and I will write the name of the file inside these double quotes so I will write title jpg okay and now I will paint this icon I'll set the context to this the object should be the name of this graphics object and that is G and the X axis should be the 25 and Y axis should be 11 all right and now we have drawn our title image and drawn the border for that title image and after that we need to draw the border for the playing area gameplay and for that I will set the color I'll set the same color to white and now I will draw rectangle okay so for that x axis should be 24 the y axis should be 74 the width should be 851 and height should be 5 57 all right so now I need to draw background for the gameplay and I have to set the black color for the background so I will set the color first color dot black now I will fill the rectangle and for that I will set the x axis to 25 y axis to 75 width should be 850 and height should be 575 another thing I just want to tell you that these are the values that I have already calculated because uh, these are necessary for the game to run efficiently because I have set the sprites for the enemies mouse or the enemy circles and my snake images that are 25 by 25 
so the width and height of the gameplay area should be multiple of 25 so that's why i have set it to 850 and the 575 so that the snake fits inside this gameplay area so now we have made what we are intended to do in this part uh, so let's see what we have now so let's play it so now you can see that i have set the uh, header image at the top and under that i have the gameplay area and i have set the border for that gameplay area to white and set the border uh, for the header at the top uh, so this was all for this part uh, in the next part we will start implementing the movement for the snake uh, so make sure to subscribe this channel and share it if you like it and comment below if you have any questions see you in the next part thank you Hi everybody, this is Umair from Top 5 Solutions. I'm back with this third part of developing Snake Game in Java. Uh, this is the third part and what we have done up till now is we have designed the user interface for our game. You can see that we have added an image at the top uh, and under that we have a panel blackish area where we will uh, move our snake. So let's start moving our snake. So what we need now, we need some variables uh, at the top. So for the positions of snake inside the panel, uh, we need to define two arrays for X position and Y position. Uh, so I will add two arrays, private int snake X length int 750, all right? Now we'll copy this line and paste it for the Y position. Other than this, I need four variables for uh, detecting on which side our snake is moving. So for that, I will take four Boolean variables, left equals to false. I will copy this line as well and paste it three times. I'll change the name from left to right, up and down. All right, now I need four variables for the snake face. So let's leave it as it is. I will copy this line as well and paste it three times right mouse, up mouse, down mouse and at the end I need to define it for the left mouse. Alright and now for the movement of snake uh, we need to uh, add a class, a timer class that will uh, manage the speed of the snake inside our panel. So for that uh, it is a built-in class timer. So I will define this and for the speed of timer I will uh, define a variable called delay and I will set it to 100. Alright and we need to define one more variable for the, uh, for the snake body. Uh, you can see that I have added an image, uh, you can see the snake image. Uh, this is the circle that will make up the whole snake. So I will add a variable for that as well. So private image icon snake image. All right. So we are done with the variables. And now what we need to do, we need to implement the arrow keys of our keyboard with the help of those who will move our snake on the panel. So for that we have an interface, a key listener. So we need to implement that. So implement key listener and we need to implement another interface action listener 
uh, you can see that I have implemented two interfaces and interfaces contain abstract method that we need to implement inside a class which implements these interfaces. Right now we have a gameplay class that is implementing these two uh, interfaces. Uh, so I, you can see that I haven't implemented yet. That's why it's showing an error. So if I hover my cursor on it, it says that add unimplemented methods. So I'll click on it. You can see that it has added different methods that are required. This is the method that comes from that action listener and these three methods have come from key listener. All right. Uh, so now we need to uh, add the default position of the snake on on our panel. Uh, so for that, uh, first what we'll do is we will add some code inside our constructor uh, before uh, writing anything in our methods. So for that, I will add the key listener. Add key listener, and now here we will uh, we need to write the object for the class that is implementing this key listener. Uh, in our case, uh, we have this gameplay class, so we'll just write this. All right, and after that, we will set some formalities. Set focusable equals to true. Set focus transform is enabled equals to false. All right. And now we will in the inside the constructor we will instantiate our timer class. Timer equals to new timer and here we will set the speed for the snake so we as you can see that we have defined the variable for the speed of snake at the top so first we will write the variable and then the context of this snake so we will write this after that we will start the timer okay so we have set the constructor for our game after that we will come down here and draw the snake okay uh, right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define uh, the snake uh, at the default position at the top left corner of our blackish area of our panel uh, so uh, but and for the moment of snake we need to write some code inside this key pressed method and inside our action performed and we will do it later on so for now we'll just draw our snake without any movement so for now just let's just go up and you can see that we have uh, defined some variables snake image so I will instantiate it so let's instantiate our variable image icon and inside it I will write the name of file right mouse okay dot png now I will draw it so right mouse paint icon and for the context I will write this for the variables of graphics we have G uh, and for the X axis uh, what I will do is I will use this array what this array will do is its first index will contain the head of the snake and the rest of other indices will contain the body of snake so for the base of the snake I will store the position of the head of snake inside the first index of this array so snake x length 0 and snake y length 0 let's make it a small y so snake x length 0 snake y length zero as well all right now we need to define the default length of the snake the default length of snake is three that we need to define in a variable just now so let's just do it 
length of snake equals to 3. Alright. Now I will start a loop. A equals to 0. And A is length then. Length of snake. Alright. Okay. I need to define the data type for this variable. So you can see that the error should be removed for now. I forgot the semicolon. So inside it, I will detect uh, the direction of the snake. If the, this variable is true, then the direction of snake should be on the left side. If this variable is true, then the direction of face mouth should be on the right side. All right. So now here I will check if a equals to 0 and right. All right. What I will do here, I will copy and paste it here and change the indices of these arrays to a, the variable of this loop. And for the left and right, I will left down and up. Okay. For the left mouth, uh, I need to use the variable for the left mouth of the snake. So left mouth. All right, and for the down mouth, I need to use the down mouth variable uh, to move the to uh, select the left mouth of the snake when this variable is true and other variables are false. So down mouth. Right. This is the name of file that I have included in our project. All right. So for the up mouth, up mouth. The name of files and the variables are same. Okay. And now at the end I need to see if a is not equals to zero means that this is not the face because the a identifies the first index uh, of the of the snake. So if a is not equals to zero, that means that the snake head has been drawn. Now we need to draw the body of snake. So for the body of snake. What we need to do, we need to use this variable snake image for drawing the body of image. So for that, I will just copy and paste this code and snake image. All right. So the name of snake image is the snake image, the same one. Okay. So before looking at what we have now by running it, uh, I just need to add one more thing is that if move equals to zero, that we need to define right now about. So what this variable will do now, uh, if it will detect if the game has just started then set the uh, default position for the snake to this. If the game has already started and we are in a play mode, then don't check this one because we will increment this variable and it will not be equal to zero. So any code that we will write inside this if condition will not be executed. It will just be executed at the first time when we will start our game. So inside it, we need to define the default position for the snake. All right. So, what we need to do now, we need to define the three positions for this array inside the zero, first, and second index, and three positions for this array inside zero, first, and the second index. So, let's just define the variable first, moves equals to zero. Okay, and now come inside it and make x length. equals to make x length 
टू इक्वल्स टू फिफ्टी एंड स्नेक एक्स लेंथ वन इक्वल्स टू सेवेंटी फाइव स्नेक एक्स लेंथ जीरो इक्वल्स टू वन हंड्रेड All right. Now do it for the y index array. I'll change the name to y, and let's make it all hundred. So you can see that what we have done up till now, we'll draw the snake and draw the body of snake for the three positions. So let's see what we have now. Okay, so you can see that we have drawn our snake at the default position that we have defined here. So I will not move now because we haven't implement any key listeners for our the movement of the snake that is going to be a bit longer. I thought that I will uh, implement the movement of snake in this part, but uh, I think that this video is going a bit longer, so I will do that in the next part. So uh, for the movement of snake, see my. Uh, next part and make sure you subscribe my channel if you like it please share it and like our facebook page top 5 solutions the link is given in the description below so see you in the next part hi everybody this is umair from top 5 solutions i'm back with the fourth part of this game development series and uh, i'm developing a snake game in java uh, and this is the fourth part and what we have done up till now is we have uh, Uh, made our user interface and draw the snake and for this part i will implement the movement for the snake based on the arrow keys on my keyboard so what we need to do now we need to detect the keys that which each arrow key is pressed uh, and based on that pressed arrow key we need to move the snake towards that direction and to detect the key i need to use Uh, this object of this class key event and what it will do is it has a method get key code that let us know that which key is pressed so for that uh, i will write if e dot get key code equals to key event dot vk underscore right okay so inside it what i will do is i will use these four variables if the right key is pressed then i will make this variable to true and make other three variables to false if the left key is pressed then i will make this variable to true and up and down and right will be false so here first of all i need to add this so that the default position of move uh, snake should not exist because if i uh, keep this to zero then the snake will always be at this position so move equal to plus and right equals to true left equals to false up equals to false down equals to false okay one thing has to be considered that uh, if we think of a snake game that uh, then if a snake is moving towards the right direction and if user press the left arrow key then should it move towards the left no because uh, uh, if the snake is moving towards the right and if we directly move towards the left side then the, it will collide with itself so we need to check here that if uh it's moving towards the right then it shouldn't move towards the left side if it's moving towards the down side it shouldn't move towards the up side um and same in the other direction so i need to check here that if left is not true then make the right to true okay else make the right to false and left equals to true and remove this line okay so what it will do is it will check if the left is not true then 
keep the snake moving towards the right side if the left is true and the right arrow key is pressed then don't move towards the left direction but keep the left true and make the right to false uh, and we will do it for the other variables as well so I'll copy it paste it and check if the left arrow key is pressed and left is true and I'll do if right is not true then left has to be true and left right has to be true okay copy and paste one more time for the up direction vk underscore up so now I will make the up variable to true and I will check if the down is not true then make the up to true otherwise I will make the down to false make the up to false sorry and down to true and left and right both will be false okay now I'll copy it and paste it for one more time for the down key so down equals to true if up is not true then make the down to true otherwise if the up is true then keep the up true and make the down false alright so what we have done is we have uh, detected the keys of the keyboard uh, and based on those keys I'm, I will move the snake accordingly but right now I haven't written any code for the movement of snake because what we need to do now we need to uh, detect the position of head based on the position of body uh, so let me show you the logic behind what I'm gonna do is let's say we have an array and inside the first index I'm storing the position of head okay let's say it is 20 and all other indices containing the position of circles the body of snake uh, so uh, we need to find out that what should be the position of body how should the circles of body should detect that we need to follow the position of head so for that uh, I have been uh, thinking a lot of time on it that what should be the calculation how does the body know that uh, this is the position that the head have been going through uh, so for that I have come to the solution so what I'm gonna do is I am storing the position of head to its previous index so what it will do is this index this circle will know that I need to move to this position 20 okay if we have a three length of a snake then its position would shift towards the back side so as long as the head is shifting its position to a new one it will shift its position to the previous index and it will have a new index one so hope you understand it and this is the logic that I'm going to implement now for the movement of snake based on its body okay so now for that I need to write a code inside this method this is automatically called uh, when the timer is starts so inside this method first I need to start the timer again okay and now I need to detect the which arrow key is pressed based on the variable so uh, I have already detected the arrow keys inside this method so here I need to check uh, which variable is true so if right is true let me write four times for the left up and down okay 
so inside this if condition uh, I need to write two loops so write the first one and r equals to length of snake minus 1 and r should be greater than 0 and r minus minus okay and we need to shift the position of head to its next index so for that I will use snake y length r plus 1 equals to snake y length r okay and inside other loop I need to write some logic okay so length of snake and r greater than 0 r minus minus okay inside this loop uh, I'm gonna shift the position of snake x length so let's check if r equals to 0 then snake x length r equals to snake x length r plus 25 okay else if r is not equal to 0 then snake x length r equals to snake x length r minus 1 okay and now inside this loop I need to check if the snake is moving and touches the border on the right side then it should come out from the left side so for that I will check the position of head that if snake x length r is greater than 850 then make the position to 25 snake x length r equals to 25 and outside this loop I need to call repaint method so that it will call what it will do is it will call this method automatically uh, and run the everything what is written inside this method so let's try this I haven't yet written anything in other if conditions so uh, the left up and down key movement will not work for now but let's see if our right movement works or not so I'm gonna just start it and I'll press the right arrow key so you can see that our snake is moving and it is coming out from the left side so uh, we are done with the right path but it will not move towards any other direction so let's just uh, write some code in other conditional statements so what I'll do is I will copy it and paste it okay I'll make to minus 25 okay and uh, if it is less than 25 then make it to 850 okay so let's copy and paste it in other conditional statements For the downside, I will change its x axis and for the right y, and here I will write y. Okay, so uh, we need to check now that if it is greater than. 625 then make the position to 75 okay and now let's do it for the up key so 
so let's change it to x and change it to y okay now we need to check if it is less than 75 then make it to 625 so I think we are done with this so let's see what we have now so I'm gonna press the right key so you can see it's moving towards the right direction uh, and uh, I'm just gonna press the down key so you can see it's moving down and it's moving left and it's moving up so okay so we are done with this with the movement so let's see if it it's moved towards the left side it comes out from the right side if it moved towards the down downside it comes out from the upside and if it move towards the upside it will come out from the downside so this is all we need to do for this part in the next part what I'll do I will add the enemy at the random position and as the snake picks up the enemy its length will increase so stay tuned uh, and make sure you subscribe this channel and like our Facebook page the link is given in the description below so see you in the next part thanks Hi everybody, this is Umair from Top 5 Solutions. This is the fifth part that I'm gonna start. Uh, you can see on my screen that uh, in the first four parts we implemented the interface and uh, in the third and fourth part we moved our snake in all four directions. Okay, so what we are gonna do in this part, we are gonna uh, write some code to add a pickup for the snake as the snake will pick that uh, point or enemy or whatever you wanna say. Uh, the snake length will be increased all right so let's start what I need to do now you can see on my screen that I have already added two arrays before starting this part what you need to do is to pause the video and write it as it is inside your code uh, these are the default positions for the pickup all right other than this I need to add three more variables one is the image icon and other other two random variables for the position of pickup uh, this is the object that I need to make before generating random positions for my pickup so let's import it and now I need to add some random positions so next and and for X uh, I need to write 34 and 34 uh, is the total number of X positions uh, on the ho in horizontally and for the Y axis I need to add another variable for Y position next int and the default Y position for the pickup is 23 okay so these are the variables that we need to add for adding the enemy and now come down right here outside this loop and here I need to detect if the head of my snake is colliding with the pickup first I need to uh, print the pickup draw the pickup on my panel and then I will check uh, if the pickup has been collided with the snake head so first I need to draw it okay so enemy image equals to new image icon and here I need to write enemy.png okay this is the name of file right here and now I need to check if the this enemy is collided with the head snake so for that I need to add a condition if enemy x position x position equals to snake x length 0 
you should remember that the zeroth index of this array contains the position of snake head okay so we have checked for the x position and now we need to check for the y position so enemy y position y position okay uh, that should be equal to snake y length 0 I need to add the bracket right here and inside it if the collision occurs if the uh, snake picks up the coin then uh, I need to increment the length of snake snake okay length of snake plus plus and after that I have to regenerate the pickup in another new position so what I'll do it I will next int 34 for y position I will generate next int 23 okay so what we have done in this part if we have uh, added the enemy we have added the uh, pickup uh, inside the blackish area in the in the default positions uh, these are the positions default and fixed position on the x-axis and these are the fixed position uh, on the y-axis now let's see if we have what we have now so okay I haven't yet print the icon I have to paint the image as well I forgot that so paint icon this graphics and its X position should be the enemy X position X position and Y position should be Y position okay now I have drawn the image so what I will do I'm gonna test my code if my pickup is drawn inside the blackish area so let's see okay so you can see that uh, my snake is moving inside the blackish area and the pickup is drawn uh, on the right side so uh, what I need to check here if the snake head is collide with that pickup the snake length should be increased okay so let's pick this up okay so you can see that my snake length is getting increased as I'm picking up the enemies so we are done with this part in the next part what I will do I will add the scores at the top uh, and uh, add the game over and I will also show the length of snake uh, at the top right corner so stay tuned and make sure you subscribe this channel if you like it please share it with your fellows so see you in the next part Thanks. hi everybody this is Umair I welcome you in this sixth part of this developing snake game in Java uh, I have already completed five parts and this is the sixth part what I'm gonna do in this part is I will add scores at the top right corner and I will show the length of snake so what you need to do is to add a variable for scores so score equal to zero okay now I need to draw this score so come right here what I need to do now is to draw the scores so first I need to set the color to white now I need to set the font properties new font Arial 
font dot plane and lastly the size of the font okay now I need to draw the font okay so we know that our scores are stored in the score variable and after that I need to set the position so for the scores I will set okay come here I'll set it to 780 and 30 okay so we have drawn our scores now I need to draw the length of snake the color and the font properties will be the same but I will change the position y axis from 30 to 50 and change the string to length and variable to the length of snake and come right here where the collision is occurring and here I need to increment the scores okay so I have written all the code that I needed for showing the scores and uh, for sh uh, incrementing the score so let's see if the scores are showing or not so you can see that uh, scores are showing uh, right here and the length is showing to 3 because uh, we have already the 3 length of the snake so as so let's see if the length and the scores are incremented as I pick this up so now my snake is moving so let's pick this up so you can see that my scores are incrementing one by one and length is also being in increased so this was a pretty uh, small part in the next part and next would be the last part of this game in the ne uh, next part I will uh, add a game over uh, when my snake will collide with itself um, and I will add a key listener for the space bar of my keyboard uh, so when the uh, snake head collide with itself a game over will be shown uh, and as the user press the space bar uh, my game will be restarted so make sure to subscribe this channel and share it if you like it and comment below if you have any questions so see you in the next part thanks Hi everybody this is Umair I'm back with the last part of this developing snake game in Java uh, you can see on my screen that my snake is moving in all four directions and it is picking the enemy and its length has been increased and the, at the top right corner you can see that scores are getting increased and showing the length of snake what we are gonna do in this part we're gonna implement the game over thing uh, and I will also implement the key listener for the space bar of my keyboard so that when the user press the space the game will be restarted uh, so for that we need to detect the collision of head with its body if the head of snake collides with its body then the game will get over so let's do it So what we need to do now first let's implement the key listener for the spacebar. Uh, just come right here and detect the key. Get key code equals to key event dot pk underscore space. Okay now what we need to do if the space bar has been pressed then we need to uh, reassign the variables so for that I will do moves equals to 0 score equal to 0 and length of snake equals to 3 and I will do 
repaint all right now for detecting the collision uh, let's come right here and I will check the collision of head with its body using a loop so let's write a for loop int b equals to 1 b is less than length of snake and b plus plus okay now I need to check if snake x length b equals to snake x length 0 okay and now I need to check for the y axis so snake y length b okay uh, equals to snake y length 0 Okay. now if the collision occurs then what we need to do now we need to set all the all the variables that let us move to the all four direction to false so right equals to false left equals to false up equals to false and down equals to false and now I need to show the game over so first I need to set the color color dot white g dot set font new font Arial font dot bold and its size should be 50 okay now draw string game over its exposition should be 300 and y position should also be 300 below this I need to show the uh, press space bar for restarting the game so I'll just copy and paste it uh, you can see that I have already set the color so the same color will be applied to this string and this string as well uh, so for this I will change the font size to 20 and change the string to space to restart and I'll change the x axis to 350 and y axis to 340 okay so I think that we are done with the collision uh, and the uh, key listener so let's see what we have now so now I'm gonna press the arrow key and you can see that my snake is moving and to check if the game over and the space bar works fine I need to first pick some coins so let's make it a bigger snake so okay so now in order to detect the collision I need to collide the head of snake with the body so you can see that the head of snake is collided with the body and we have shown the game over uh, and the space to restart now I'm gonna press the space bar if the game is restarted or not so let's press it so you can see that our game is restarted scores have been reset and the length has been reset now I can play again so guys this was the last part uh, so if you have any questions or any reviews uh, please comment below because this was my first try on YouTube that I have made the tutorial uh, I have planned to make some more tutorials on other technologies like Android development Windows 10 application development game development in game maker studio and unity 3d uh, so please 
give me the reviews and give me suggestions for the video quality content quality audio quality that what are the recommendation that I have to follow in order to improve my tutorials so make sure you subscribe this channel and share it uh, and please do like our facebook pages and subscribe our website the link is given in the description below so see you in the next tutorials take care